uh, at the World Creators Summit and we're going to have a bit of a discussion about the uh, Global Repertoire Database or GRD. So uh, first of all, uh, we've got uh, FX uh, Natal, who is Product Specialist uh, at uh, YouTube uh, uh, slash Google, of course. Yeah. And uh, then uh, we have uh, uh, Niels uh, Mosmugard, uh, who is uh, uh, Vice Chair at the Danish uh, Songwriters Guild. So hi guys and thanks for joining me. How's it going? Hey, super. Hey, Thank you. Super, yeah. Great, awesome. So, uh, so first of all, let's talk about uh, the importance of the GRD. The project is kicking off in earnest. You know, it's been in the works for quite some time, but now, you know, quite recently they announced uh, that they're going to open some offices, and so it's uh, the thing is really starting to kick into gear. So, uh, first of all, uh, FX, uh, what's your take on the GRD, and why is it important for uh, somebody like YouTube? Uh, so without a joke, it's really music to our ears to have the GRD. Uh, we are very dependent on the data to be able to monetize the content for the benefit of the creators. So we need to f identify who owns what. And we're talking about 5 million works worldwide on uh, about 100 territories. And so it's a lot of data and a lot of resources to actually identify rights holders. So when the GRD comes in, uh, which will be this database where we can identify the publishing and, and the author's rights, uh, we couldn't go there and clearly identify where to go for a license. Yeah. And this will change our business completely. Yeah. And Niels, uh, from your perspective, as sort of representative of the, of the creators community, what's your take on the GRD and why do you think it's important? Well, I think it's important of, of many reasons, actually. Mainly because we have this uh, merging of, of, of data, uh, the publishers and the scientists, as FX is, is telling about. So we, we, we have this authoritative uh, bank of data. Uh, one thing, it's very important in a multi-territorial licensing world. Uh, and then I think it's, it's very important and a, a very productive thing that we, that we meet, the creators meet with the licenses, with the societies, with the publishers. Yeah. Being in the same room, having to make consensus about the, the problems we have, instead of pointing to each other and say, "Well, I mean, he's he's walking down he's walking down the down the street, but I wouldn't talk to him." Yeah. Now we have to meet and and have serious discussions. One must say yeah. that, yeah. Uh, absolutely. But but you know, with with this end of the requirement and, and design phase that we are signing off in two weeks or something like that. Uh, we have, we have uh, yeah, made some agreements. Uh, this is how we think it should look like right now. Yeah. Let's move forward with this. Like, let's try to build it. And uh, when we start working with it, let's see if it's the right way. Is there really something we, we need to change? So two very you know, different things, but, but I think they're very important. Okay. Uh, and so in terms of the history of the project, so when, when do you first uh, hear about this and, and how long have, have you been involved? So it's been a couple of months now, so the project has been active for a year and a half, two years maybe, since this very early stage of, yeah. of concept, conceptualization. Um, and we've been deeply involved in that recent phase that lasted about six months, yeah. where um, thankfully the, the licensees that I represent here were invited to actually you know, provide some input and understand the requirements that we have. Uh, and so the publishers and societies uh, could take our needs uh, and integrate them into the project. So it's been very, very helpful. Yeah. Uh, for us to really be able to participate. Yeah, sure. And uh, uh, from your perspective, you know, how long uh, have you been involved? And do you think, uh, you know, how how do you see the project shaping up uh, for the, for the future as well? Well, I've been involved since October last year. Uh, I'm I'm a representative of of EXA, the European Composers and Songwriters Alliance, uh, and well, I heard about GID in the very beginning. Uh, someone from the working group of the parliament uh, visited our, our meeting at EXA yeah. and told us about it and, and uh, we all were very suspicious or oh, I was very suspicious <laughs> <laughs> because it seems so huge and, and uh, unrealistic in, in some ways and, and, and we had those looking at it and, and it, hey it looked like the publishers, the majors would be there and oh they would take all the the benefits and uh, so 
but but during the the two years, I think it has been progressing. Uh, it it sort of changed, uh, and in October, uh, the exit people asked me if I would go. Uh, to have a seat there, and uh, I, I think it's been very interesting and, and very good. Yeah. And it feels like the, the timing as well has has been right because the, maybe the, when it started, the problem wasn't quite as acute as it is now. And uh, you know, in the past two years, uh, more and more uh, we feel the need of a database of this kind. And you were talking about you know the sort of matching and, and some of the numbers that that YouTube does and it's it's insane. Yeah, it, it is insane. <laughs> Look at it uh, from a certain perspective. But um, what really triggered the whole need is the implementation of the pan-European licenses, or what I should call the multi-territorial licensing. Yeah. So we are exactly at a turning point in the licensing, at least in Europe, but it's growing worldwide, where uh, major rights holders are now providing licenses on a multi-territorial basis. Yep. And this uh, impacted on the fact that we need to identify the repertoire that is being licensed. Yep. So when a publisher tells us, okay, you can have my repertoire, then we, okay, which repertoire? You know, What are these works that are being licensed? And this is where the GRD comes in to provide us with this authoritative information that we actually really need now. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, uh, looking at uh, the GRD as a project that was really started in Europe. Uh, what is the? How do you feel the, the involvement of the community worldwide is at the moment? Well, we have made the decisions about location, and, and it, it's sort of Eurocentralized. Uh, the headquarter in London, the the first operational center in Berlin, but but obviously it, it, it the plan is to to make it twenty four seven. So we need. The Asian market is a completely different market, so you need the expertise uh, of the Asian market going to Japan or, or somewhere like that, and it's to, to the United States as well. As well. Yeah, sure. We need operational centers everywhere. And for, for you, for the, in terms of the collection societies, uh, do, do, do you feel like uh, it's 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 good for you guys to be in the same room with all the collection societies and all the, all those stakeholders and and discuss things uh, in, a, in in a sort of uh, uh, in a problem-focused manner, which uh, I guess uh, uh, encourages relationships as well. <laughs> yeah, problem-focused or solution-focused, solution maybe. Focus, yeah, yeah. Um, no, they are major partners for us. Societies and, and publishers are really the, the key players uh, helping uh, YouTube and Google deploy its, its products. So it's definitely needed. Um, and we appreciate the, the internationalization of the project. So right now, it, it is like most European-centric because this is where the, the need is urgent. Yeah. But the scope of the GRD is to integrate uh, Latin American repertoire, Northern American, Asian, African. So it's really very broad in focus, but yeah. it's going to come in stages. So we're going to start with the European, as I said, the, the most urgent need. But we're looking forward to have the other more exotic uh, on a U.S. perspective uh, repertoire available also. Sure. Well, that's great. Thanks so much for your time. And uh, it's yes. going to be really interesting to see what happens in the next uh, year and a half, two years, and see whether in 2015 we're going to see the database come out uh, into existence. Definitely. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.